appreciate you taking the time to come out. I know that it, there's a lot going on this weekend. Um, it's been, and it's the holidays coming up. We're in between Christmas and New Year, and and the Christmas stuff is fast approaching. So um, lots going on. But I appreciate you taking your time. I just want us to get together every couple of months to, so that we can talk about what's been happening and what is going to happen and uh, and to see each other. Um, one of the big things I'm interested in uh, that both Kelly and I are interested in is community. It's the primary reason the grid exists. So we made it originally, Utopia Sky originally, for a place to do Golden Touch shows and for the Golden Touch community, as it were, to have a place to come uh, to call home. And I think it, we've achieved that to some degree, although Golden Touch is morphing, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, the community part remains the thing that's important uh, to me and to Callie, I think. Um, and so I'm really pleased that you're all here, and I want us to continue to grow and improve the technology so that we build a stronger community. Um, in terms of the agendas up on the wall there, I can, uh, uh, I'll talk to those points. Um, up next, the state of the grid. So we're uh, pretty stable. We have, we've had some regions uh, go away and some new regions added. I think that's pretty consistent with most of what you'll see at any other grid. Um, I also think that we've gotten some really nice press, if you will, uh, from the community at large. And I have a really good working relationship, uh, both of us, both Kelly and I do with other grids. So for instance, I'll talk in a few minutes about some code changes. A lot of those came from just conversations I was having with the owners of Mobius Grid. Edison uh, runs his own grids, of course, and he he's very active over here. Uh, we have a good working relationship and help each other out. And um, I'm, there's communication that happens occasionally with uh, Discovery, with Balpeen and, and Terry, with DigiWorlds. So uh, open lines of communication, and I think that's kind of the way of things with OpenSim, is the grid owners that are serious about running grids, um, which doesn't mean that the ones, there's lots of hobbyist grids that pop up. Um, those are, are interesting too, but the ones that are really trying to be more commercial and actually run a, a, a regular grid are pretty good at collaborating and working together. So um, I'm gl glad for that because I think uh, it allows us to build a stronger thing across all of the grids that exist. And I'm pleased to be able to be a part of that. So uh, I, that you'll see more of that in the future, more collaboration and, uh, and working together on features and things like that. Um, Maria did a presentation yesterday. I've seen the slides. I wasn't able to actually see the presentation where she talked about the state of OpenSim. Um, so there was a couple of call outs uh, from the summer poll that she did. And in particular, Utopia Sky got a mention uh, primarily for our service and support. Uh, that makes me really happy, especially to see that because uh, I want there's been a lot of things that have happened in the past year around grids that have just gone away or failed or folded for any number of reasons. Um, Inworlds, of course, is the obvious one that we're all aware, many of us are aware of. But uh, I want this to be a safe place and I want it to people to feel comfortable that they can count on what we're building here, that the technology is sound and solid. And, and I have comments to make about that coming up. There's some changes, a few changes that I'm going to be making to increase the level of, of reliability for the grid. It's already actually, I think, pretty good. But um, the, the, having this be a safe place for people to put down roots and call home and feel like there's a community feeling here is, is, is a big part of what we're about. So um, I think the, overall the grid is good. We're we're dedicated and going to continue to do what we're doing. I think a, a number of us, all of us that are running this and or helping to operate it would like more, like to see more engagement and more concurrency. I can't, I mean, I can't obviously make people log in, but I also know that we can only do so much as, as just uh, the founders and administrators. And I encourage people to, to do things with, you know, if you want to, 
start an initiative um, or do something on the grid and you need help, please approach us. That We're very open and willing to help, things like that. In fact, I think that's how a lot of the growth needs to happen just for it to be sustainable. If we try and do it such that Callie and I are just carrying the load for everything or, or Ego who's been here pretty much and helping from the beginning, we're not gonna be successful. We can't do it all ourselves. So um, our goal is to have a, a reliable home that where the technology is sound, create some opportunities for people to get together. And we do that with Fetish Fire and the art shows and the things that we plan, but also to encourage and help support other people who wanna build a sense of community around here. We did some things with uh, the Adult Hub and an adult art show early on there I, I know Callie and I in particular would be very interested in seeing an adult community grow because I think that there's a need for that uh, for people to feel safe and and have a place that they can call home and an adult together so uh, but that doesn't and other things are interesting too so uh, overall I uh, I just think we're in a, an okay place we're in a good place and we're growing uh, the open sim community as a whole is is good and we're working together and that's a part i think that i am pleased by and i'd like to see more of all right so i'm gonna touch on a few things that went that happened with the grid as a whole there's uh creators guild we made some changes recently um with the stores we had four regions dedicated for the creators guild the the stores that were there were pretty spread out and then um, the whole point of the Crater Skilled stores originally was to have kind of a walking experience, a place to go where people could walk around and see and shop. Uh, and the fact that they were spread out as they were sort of gotten away of that. So what we did was we coalesced four regions down to two. The other two are still actually there. They're just turned off. So should we ever need them, we can just turn them back on again and, and continue to add stores. But the all of the stores that were involved were moved to those two regions so greater skilled stores are still there uh, mostly me i'm behind my time on this I need to upgrade the uh, teleport board to reflect the current configuration and i'll take care of that but uh, the store moves are actually complete all of the stores have rental boxes in them um, there's a, a reasonable fee for renting uh, with an accommodation for people that own a region, uh, you're eligible for potentially a, a store if you own a region on the grid. Um, and the many people who do actually will choose to host their own stores on their own regions. That's also fine. Uh, but, but this is a place where a bunch of stores are together for people for to have a shopping experience. Um, so rental boxes are there if anybody wants a store space. Uh, you can claim a store through the rental boxes for ones that are vacant uh, by just paying the rental box. And uh, and like I said, we're it's it has the more intimate feeling I was hoping we would get out of it. I think, and uh, if we do need to grow it, we have a way to do that. So um, that change is pretty much complete. Um, there's a couple of upper upcoming code changes I want to talk to really quick. And then I'm going to let Callie address uh, some other things that are happening on the grid coming up. Um, in terms of code, I'm getting a new build ready to roll out that I'm testing on beta right now. It has a couple of things that are new features. Uh, one of them is for performance purposes, and that and it has to it has to do with the way the viewer fetches assets. Uh, right now we all those assets go across uh, UD, the UDP connection that the viewer maintains. And many of us have experienced performance problems when the UDP pipeline gets behind and then and things get laggy or stop responding for a period of time until it catches up. The idea behind this is to move really dense assets like mesh and textures out of that UDP pipeline. And uh, it's been running on a couple of other grids. This is a case where there's been some collaboration with Mobius uh, amongst others um, to implement this viewer assets callback that the viewer knows it's the viewers had it for a while that we just haven't had support for it in OpenSim. So that's in testing on the beta grid and I'll roll it out with the next release. 
Uh, the other thing that's in the beta grid in environment that will also come with this rollout is uh, display name support similar to what's in uh, Second Life. So you can have a separate display name from your regular uh, username. Um, there's lots of reasons people like to do that. Lot, sometimes for role play communities, uh, they'll take advantage of that. Uh, that capability is, it's been supported by the viewer for a long time. So we'll, I'll be adding that. That is also courte courtesy of Mobius Grid. They did the original code for it and made it available. And I've merged it into our tree and been doing some testing around it. Uh, there's a couple of other performance improvement hack patches that are in there. Um, so in general, I th it should be a, a, a fairly safe and easy release, but uh, it's on the beta grid now if anybody wants to, to access and try it out. And, uh, and I will be announcing a rollout probably in the next coming weeks. My guess is I'll roll this out towards the end of the year right before, or around uh, just after the first. Um, but we'll see how it goes with the testing. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to touch on was some configuration to the grid itself. So the way the grid servers are currently implemented, there I have what's called data redundancy implemented now. So uh, what what that means is that every all the data that's used for uh, the database and the assets are written in two places so that if one ever fails, the other continues to operate and you don't lose data. Uh, it's essentially like a real-time online backup. Um, I'm going to be adding uh, an additional level of redundancy. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to add another grid server and redundant, make the services redundant. And what that means is that the grid servers itself, like the login server and user servers and asset servers and so on, will have two copies running. So we'll be redundant at the data level, no data loss. And then at the service level, I'll be able to potentially take one down for maintenance if I need to. Uh, while the other continues to service requests. So um, I think in the lifetime of USG, we've had all of about 40 minutes or so of outages that I'm aware of, which happened for one of which happened very early on. Uh, we had a failure with one of the servers. Uh, since then, really, the grid has almost never been offline. Uh, occasionally, regions will be offline when we do rolling restarts. But uh, overall, the grid has been super reliable, and I'm really proud of that. But these new changes will actually increase the level of reliability and, and hopefully give us a really good platform for going forward. So um, uh, those changes will be coming around the same time as the code rollout. When I swap the new grid server in, there will be a very short period of time where the grid will be offline because I have to actually add a load balancer in front of that and make it all work so that they know how to do failover and everything. It, it should be a very limited period of time and I'll advertise it and disable logins when that happens. Uh, but otherwise we'll be online uh, through the per through the entire period when we do the upgrade, it'll be normal, normal rolling restarts. So regions will be down for a short period of time, but the grid will be up through the entire process. So. Again, uh, hopefully no outages, and with the redundant services, it should uh, improve even that further for the grid service. So those are the major things I wanted to talk about uh, for upcoming changes. Like I said, the big thing that I'm pleased with, and I want to uh, reiterate this, especially since Edison just dropped in, um, is that a lot of the new changes that I'm putting in, the viewer asset, uh, functionality and the, the display names in particular were from Mobius Grid, uh, come from collaboration between grids. And um, while the state of OpenSIM and Core, uh, you know, people occasionally will complain about it. I've been known to complain about it. Uh, but I, I think that the grid owners themselves are working together well to kind of support this environment. And I'm pleased with that. And I really think that that's the thing that makes OpenSIM 
uh, successful is the fact that those of us that are trying to run things in production fashion are helping each other out uh, because we realize that this is an ecosystem that we're all part of. So, uh, and I'm glad that Utopia Sky is a part of that and, and we'll continue to work with them and contribute things back as well. So. All right, that's it for me for my uh, long monologue up front. <laughs> I apologize for that. I'm going to turn it over to Callie to talk about uh, some Golden Touch stuff and uh, some of the upcoming events on the grid. And then we'll open it up for Q&A. Thanks. So um, Mike had talked about, you know, our longevity on the grid. And, you know, part of the reason the grid came about was because we wanted a place um, to where we could control the tech so that we could do Golden Touch shows really unfettered. Um, and there's kind of been up and down about that. Um, first of all, it's hypergrid. So we literally went from this, you know, walled community of however many people, whether they were there currently or not, there was still a big population. And it was like everybody, you know, somebody just took that whole walled community, threw it up in the air and watched it drop down and just, just shred itself everywhere. So you've got pockets of people that have wound up in the far reaches of the hypergrid universe, as it were. And so we don't really have the following that we did in IW. That's not a huge deal. That just takes, you know, building the brand again and, and making it happen. But what we were also experiencing was uh, leftover anger, mistrust, people didn't want to come by, you know, all this other stuff that kind of played in. And we really took a big hit on that because emotionally that takes a toll. Nobody understands that better than anybody that's been through a grid that's folded, whether it was IW or any other one. Um, but GT took a hit for that too, because GT has always been uh, an art artistry based community. And uh, say what you will about artists, um, they are emotional people. I am absolutely hand up in the air, one of those people. So there was a period of time where we weren't sure, uh, you know, if GT was ever going to come back or what it would look like when it did. And I know for myself, and I can. I can speak with some confidence, I think, as to the dancers, although I wouldn't want to put words in anyone's mouth. But from those that have expressed to me, um, they miss, you know, the community of GT and, you know, what we were doing, you know, uh, even just the regularity of getting together and, and having fun. I mean, I can't tell you how many times, you know, what started out was, you know, as, as A, B, and C wound up being X, Y, and C, and it was brilliant for it. So... After some rehashing and some soul searching, we had a discussion about bringing back GT in a way that is scalable. Um, you know, we started with this big GT thing and, you know, six numbers and huge epics, you know, and that's fabulous. I love doing that. There's nothing better than doing that. But that's also not reasonable to expect to actually, you know, be able to churn out regularly. So what we went back to was the original design of Golden Touch was a dinner theater. And that was what made it unique, not just the artistry or the music or the sets or whatever. It was the fact that in InWorlds at the time, there didn't exist a place where you could go and, and sit down and, and have a meal, you know, with a community of people. Because it wasn't just you doing this in your home or, you know, at a, a central place. It was, it was a whole community coming together and doing this. And, you know, people dressed up for it. It kind of harkens back to the days, I, I say this lightly, days of old, right, where you'd have to dress up to go to the theater, you know. <laughs> you know, you didn't come in your Daisy Dukes and ripped T-shirts or whatever. Anyway, um, that was how it started. And that's what we're going to kind of go back to. And the thought that comes to mind for me has always been, and it's always the example I've used, is MTV Unplugged. And that was where uh, an artist would sit kind of in the center, you know, of a room, uh, the audience wasn't that far away from the artist, and they would sing either a cappella or, you know, whatever whatever the venue at the time was for. So we're going to do something similar. So um, the Golden Touch Theater still exists, will continue to exist. The big shows are still going to happen. They're just going to happen in less quantity, which is much more achievable for everybody and less uh, hair pulling out stressful kind of thing. And the, the smaller intimate venues, I think, will allow us to attract our audience again because then when it's a smaller thing 
you know, if three people show up and that word of mouth happens, then 10 people show up and, you know, it, it may grow into something else or it may not. The fact is we'll still have a community where we can kind of display artistry, which goes hand in hand with a lot of the other endeavors that Utopia Sky is doing. It, it started off as just being a place where GK, GT could do its work and function. And it's now become a place where, you know, we've got, as Mike mentioned, these art shows. We had an adult art show, which was really popular. We had um, a traditional, like a mature art show. So it would be like PG and, and adult stuff, but not uh, rated R stuff. And that was also pretty popular as well. And, you know, I kind of feel some sense of that community can be achieved again, so long as we keep it in perspective. Um, so that's what we're doing with GT in a big, long, you know, probably unnecessarily long story. I just wanted you guys to understand it. So in the coming year, we're going to have um, a smaller venue, which may or may not be on the Golden Sky region. I'm still talking it through with some other folks and need to have some conversations with even some more. Um, but we may work in partnership with other people or we may work solo. We haven't decided that yet. But we will be um, launching that early next year. I would expect probably first quarter. I'm hoping for January, which probably means February. But, you know, we'll, we'll, sh we'll shoot for the stars, right? You know, <laughs> so that's kind of what um, Golden Touch is kind of morphing into. And um, so did you, did you want me to go on with the other bit, Mike? Or did you want to, did you need to say anything in between? Or? Uh, go ahead. I actually did forget okay. to talk about one thing, but I'll pick it up at the tail end. Okay. All right. So the other thing that is on the agenda under the Golden Touch Unplugged is upcoming events. We've actually started seeing a few pretty static events that are happening. Um, there's also some pretty static events going on uh, by other folks that are on the grid, too. And um, so we want to make mention of those because it's not just official events that are going on. As Mike mentioned, it's entirely too much to expect either one of us to create all these events that people can just come to. It's it's very unrealistic. Um, you know, we're, we're people too with our own lives and our own health issues and our own whatever. So we kind of need other people to kind of bring their own game to it and kind of put their face on what they want to do. And that's kind of what we're starting to see. Um, and hopefully it'll be on a greater scale. You know, again, everything kind of needs to grow organically and we understand that. So some of the current events that we have going on every Tuesday, Edison Rex, who's sitting here at the table here, um, does a set at our Music in the Parks area, which is a mature region. And it's on the Sky Botanical Gardens, which is also where the ballroom is. Um, and the gardens where Edison also does once a month a set called uh, the Ephemera Space. I think that's ephemera space, right, Edison? Correct me if I'm wrong. It's beautiful. Ephemera. Ephemera, thank you. I never pronounce it right. Edison is a very talented artist who actually does his own compositions. And he does them in this beautiful space that Moon Tan put together that is just, it was just perfect. Like literally the marriage between his artistry and what Moon, Pan, Moon Tan put together was like, it was just non-existent. It was just right there. It was just like, it was designed for it. So that's once a month and that's always updated on the uh, Sky Botanical Gardens Open Sim Directory page. And then the Tuesday events are also updated on the Open Sim Sky Botanical page. Um, the Music in the Park set is actually parceled off. So if you're tooling around the Botanical Gardens and you're really enjoying the kind of ethereal kind of music that's playing there. Um, we decided to parcel it off so that if Edison's like rocking out, which he frequently does on Tuesdays, um, you're not like jarred by that. However, you can come there and, and hear a different type of music. It's really done nicely on a dock that's lit up like a, a party scene. It's, it's a nice area. And then every Saturday, of course, Fetish Fire, which has gotten a lot of attention lately, um, has sets. We actually have sets starting at noon with Gertie and then two with Mike and then four with me. And sometimes they go from noon until like, <laughs> I'm supposed to end at six. Sometimes I don't end until seven and sometimes I've gone even later than that. And we stream all of those things into the streaming lounge in Discord. So if you can't make it to the location, although we'd love to see you, you can always uh, hop into the streaming lounge and uh, tune in there 
so if you don't have access to the streaming lounge, you take a look at Discord on the left where all your channels are listed. It's the one that has the headset next to it. It says streaming music lounge. So if you don't see that, you want to make sure you get the permission set to see it. Because that means you don't always have to be physically at the location. Um, all of our events are listed on our OpenSim directory page. Um, I know that we have uh, Lola who does her um, Sunday events as well. Um, I think it's sometimes radio stories and sometimes a, a tribute something or other. So, you know, she's been doing that, you know, without fail for the past year. So, I mean, there, there are other things to see and do here aside from the official events of which there will be more coming too. So we're going to be opening up the ballroom uh, in the next, I was hoping for the next couple of weeks uh, with our first formal uh, dance at the venue that Mike and I got married in. Um, gosh, I think I'm missing something. I mean, the GT club events are pretty standard. We try and do those once every other month. And in essence, when we don't have a GT show of some variety, we'll have a GT club event. Um, New Year's. New Year's Eve. Oh, the, yes, it, New Year's. New Year's, yes. So last year we did an event on New Year's. We did 12 hours. Literally, we had about five DJs, myself and Mike included, and we started from, I don't even remember, I think it was like 11 o'clock in the morning grid time, and we went all the way until Pacific time New Year, which for Mike and I, in our real life, is like 3 a.m. <laughs> it was a long day, but it was super fun. And we had it at the Adult Hub. So we may not have it at the Adult Hub this year. We you know, might like switch the location, but we are doing something similar. We're probably going to start somewhere around 1 o'clock grid time instead of 11 with Gertie. And then Edison's going to do his normal 3 to 5, and then Mike will pick up and I'll come in. I don't know that we'll make it to Pacific New Year this year, but it should prove to be a really fun time. And it's one of those, you know, pop in when you want to kind of things. We're going to be there playing music anyway. And uh, it was really successful last year. Uh, the location is up for debate this year. I think we were talking about Fetish Fire, Adult Hub, or the Music in the Parks area. Um, so we haven't decided that yet, but definitely keep your eyes out for notices in that. Um, can I talk about Discord for a second? I know that's not necessarily on the agenda. No, sure, go ahead. Okay. Our Discord server is uh, full of lots of different groups, right? So we've got the grid, we've got the folks that play MMO games, we've got the streaming lounge, we had the meditation lounge, we've got the open sim tech forum. We have all sorts of things going on in our Discord. In that respect, we are a little bit different than most of the other discords I've been familiar with. Most have a, a singular purpose and they, they manage that purpose well. We have multiple groups. So if there is something that you are aware of that you want to be part of, but you don't see in Discord, get in touch with Eagle or myself. I mean, we are the two that really administer Discord. Mike can fill in in a pinch, but really it's Eagle and myself that manage it. Um, if you don't have access to the meditation lounge and we run a meditation that you want to be part of, um, you want to make sure you get access to that because you have to actually ask for that access. We don't automatically give that access. If you play the uh, bots, uh, you know, that's also another thing that you don't get just by joining the server. You have to physically ask for that because um, those bot channels can be pretty noisy. And if people don't like that, you know, they, you, know, you don't have to have that. The other thing to remember too, and I, I keep saying this every time I talk about Discord is, please don't mute the server. I know it's super tempting. I've done it myself. I have about 40 now that we can group up Discord servers. Now I have about 45 <laughs> servers that I'm in and I've got them all grouped up and it's fabulous. And I have 90% of them muted. But I'm asking you to please not do that with this channel, with this server, because there are so many things that you can do here. And the way we've set this server up is so that if you find that our server is too chatty for you, everything is devised under a category and channel system. So everything that you do in this server, you can look for the category to get to it. And if, let's say, the streaming lounge is too chatty for you, you can simply right click that uh, channel and ignore that channel. So that way, it's not going to be chatting to you. You're not going to see notifications on your phone for it but you don't mute the server and miss other potentially important messages. 
it's really important for the grid people in particular. This is our primary method of communication. You have to be in our Discord if you're on the grid. You really have to. It's, it's, it, it's, it would be an extraordinary exception if you didn't need to be in Discord and be on the grid and, and hold land. So um, if for any reason somebody doesn't want to join, have them talk to me directly. If there is an extenuating circumstance, you know, we might be able to make an accommodation. But I also realized that um, the Discord for IW wasn't handled very well. We are not handling our Discord that same way. So just for everybody to know that. If you have any questions or concerns, if you need help in Discord, if you want some training, if you need some one-on-one -on -one help, I will do my best to accommodate people. I am more than happy to do it. I also learn Discord as they make changes, and they do make a lot of them. Um, but I'm happy to go through learning that with you. But please don't ignore the server. You'll miss out on a lot of precious information and updates. And that's it for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. So <laughs> it's all you, Mike. OK. I've only got one more thing to talk about, which I uh, missed earlier. And then I'll open it up for Q&A if there is any. Um, I had uh, meant to talk about, um, so we have a resident on the grid now who's interested in potentially exploring offering rentals to people. Um, and we're, ver we're very interested, obviously, in building the community that we talked about. And a big part of that is encouraging residents to make this home. Uh, we've got two new residents at the table here, Alex and Prax, welcome, um, that have done that. And if we have uh, a rental uh, case that gives us another opportunity to potentially offer uh, uh, people a place to live. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't be doing administering it ourselves. This other resident will be. Um, at this point, if you have interest or you know anybody that might be interested in a rental, uh, contact Callie or myself and we can put you in touch with uh, the person that's doing this. I think they will probably do something to formally announce it as soon as they're ready. But they're, uh, they're up and running uh, at least for a couple of, of spaces and, uh, and able to service that. And then beyond that, so rentals are interesting because a lot of times what happens is someone will come in and they'll rent space for a period of time. Some people are happy with that for the long haul. I know of a number of people like, like that that just always prefer to rent. Um, the, uh, another option as you go from there would be to, we have a, an intro region that's available to anybody, um, a, the, a single region, anybody can get a single region that is introductory. It's a reduced number of prims and also reduced price. So, um, in fact, I had the uh, website available here. Um, the intro region is $8. So that's a small step up from what someone will probably pay for a rental for a quarter of a, of a SIM. Uh, so that gives them an opportunity to be a landowner directly. Um, you can add prim packs to that as well if you want to grow it, or you could uh, move to a full region, which many others have, and that's 25,000 prims. Um, uh, the pricing is all on the website. So if you want to find it, if you look on... Uh, the Utopia Sky web page under Utopia Sky, the very first item has the pricing and information about how to order a region. So, uh, um, but the main thing I wanted to call out is that we have somebody that will be offering rentals here as well. So if you know somebody that might be interested, uh, have them talk to Kelly or myself and we'll steer them in the right direction. And I hope to, I hope to see more of that in the future. It's like I said, uh, really encourage building uh, a community of people that call this place home. My goal, my part of that bargain is to make this a reliable, safe place. And then we're going to do the best we can, all of us, to to ensure that. And uh, the, everybody else's responsibility is just to show up and, and call it home. So thank you. I, I thank you to all of you for doing that. Um, that's it for the the comments I wanted to make, I'll just open it up for Q&A. So uh, if there's any questions, uh, Discord is live. You should be able to um, push to talk to speak if you wish. Right. 
And actually, Eagle, that page should actually be visible. Uh, Eagle posted the pricing. That page should be visible without being able to log, without having to log in. If it's not, I'll fix it. But uh... then fix it, please. <laughs> okay, I'll fix it. Yeah, I, I didn't have to log in to see it. Um, okay. But yeah, that you can just click on the link that says Utopia Sky Pricing. It'll open up a PDF for you, and it's got all of the <coughs> all of the pricing, including low use regions and all sorts of stuff. We tried to be as detailed as possible, but if there's any question, we can, you know, we can certainly talk to you directly. So, any questions or comments or anything? Because we want to wish people happy holidays. We do that too. Uh, happy holidays to everybody. <laughs> I've completely forgotten all the questions I had. Sorry. <laughs> Hey, Harry, I didn't see you come in. All right. Absolutely happy holidays, everybody. And thanks again for being part of our grid. We appreciate it. Yes. We'll do this again in probably March time frame. I hope to have some interesting things to talk about then as well with regards to technology. Um and new features and things. Uh, I've got a, a pipeline of stuff I'm working on. Uh, and again, uh, I'm pleased to be able to collaborate with some of the other grid owners and do some things that uh, enhance the hypergrid and make us all work together better. So, all right. Well, okay. if there's no questions, we'll we'll call the formal meeting. I think everybody else has gone really, really shy. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Thanks, everybody. I, I do want to say thank you for having the meeting. It's good to hear news and to be in touch with things.